Armstrong's Ferry by Heather Galindo. Armstrong's Ferry is a well-known author and illustrator. Sperry was born on November 7, 1897. He was born and raised in New Haven, Connecticut. As far back as Sperry could remember, he scribbled and drew pictures for fun. Sperry's great-grandfather, Captain Sereno, is the one who deeply influenced him. Sereno would tell him stories about the sea life because Sereno followed the sea all his life. Sereno would tell Sperry hair-raising stories about the remotest parts of the world. One favorite story of Sperry was the one his great-grandfather told him of being wrecked on this wonderful South Sea island named Bora Bora, where he spent months among the savages who lived there. His great-grandfather used to say, That was the prettiest little island I ever did see. I hope you'll see it for yourself someday, youngin. His family, including his father, were among the state's earliest settlers. On one side of the family, the men followed the call of the sea, while those on the other raised crops out on the farm. Throughout most of Sperry's life, he was conscious of the two types of living. Sperry maintained a farm in the green hills of Vermont, but on occasion, he couldn't resist the calling of the sea especially with all the exciting stories he had heard from great-grandpa Sereno. Sperry grew up and got married in 1930 to Margaret Roberts, whom they had a son named John and a daughter named Susan. Armstrong graduated from high school and went straight to attend Yale Art School. He attended college for a year until he was enlisted to go into the Navy. After the Navy, he went back to school, but this time to another college. He attended Art Student League in New York for three years and then went on to live in Paris for a year. After that, he was an advertising agency for a couple of years, but always in the back of his mind was that island that his great-grandfather Serena would talk about. So then that is when he found himself at Tahiti looking for a schooner to help him take him to that island. So of course he did find one. And then he found the island his great-grandfather was always talking about. So this fact explains why he uses the South Pacific and the Polynesians as his craft in so many of his books for young children. He also uses the tropics and the jungle as well for many of his inspirations. Call It Courage is the reason people still know of Sperry's work. It won him the Newbery Medal in 1941. It has been continuously printed ever since it published, which has been about 70 years. Call It Courage was filmed for television and appeared on The Wonderful World of Disney for the first time on April 1974. Call It Courage is about a boy named Mafatu who is afraid of the sea. It had taken his mother when he was just a baby, in which he got very lucky that he survived. So he thinks the sea got seek vengeance at having cheated death. Mafachu was the son of the great chief of Hikaru, who are a race of Polynesians who worship courage. Mafatu was named Stout Heart, but he feared and avoided the sea until everyone branded him the coward. Then there came a point where he could no longer bear the taunts and teases, so he wanted to conquer this fear of his. Mafatu wanted to prove to himself that he is no coward, so he went out to the island. He went out to the sea alone, with the exception of his little dog and pet albatross. One of his challenges was facing a storm while he was sailing the seas. Then came a time where he spent days on a desert island and found out that he was very resourceful beyond his own expectations. He was able to kill a wild boar and a shark as he also built a small but useful hut for his dog and himself, and he also built spears from a large animal, along with running a flock of man-eaters. This proves what type of courage he ended up having and how it grew. Now he felt he was able to return to tell his people that he is no coward and can be called the Stout Heart. Mafachu was exhausted in body, but strong and fearless in spirit. Call It Courage has a narrative element which has a setting and characterization which is part of Sperry's craft. It was his conviction that no writer should ever write down to children. 
He tells his stories clearly in a straightforward manner that leaves his readers, young or old, wondering what happens next. Sperry has won numerous awards other than the Newbery Medal Award, including the Newbery Honor Award in 1936 for All Cell Set, which is about a 14-year-old boy who was forced to earn his own living under certain circumstances. He had seen drawings of the boat called the Flying Cloud and was amazed at its shape and size and it was the biggest boat he ever did see. He gave it his all to make that boat perfect and went through challenges to get there, but eventually he did. He also received a Newbery Honor Award in 1937 for the book called Codfish Musket. In 1944, Sperry also won the New York Herald Tribune Children's Spring Book Festival Award for Storm Canvas, which is a kind of award for the newspaper called the New York Herald, established for the best children's book of the previous year. This was actually considered the second nationwide children's book award after the Newbery Medal. In 1949, he won the Boys Club of American Junior Book Award for the book Rainforest, which is a book I liked very much. Rainforest is about a boy named Chad who is very eager to explore the nature world and has no limits. His father was an or ornithologist who wanted to look for a rare specimen of a bird in the jungles of New Guinea, and Chad was eager to go with him. Chad ends up going and meets a boy named Natua, who is the son of the native leader there in the jungle, and which of course he befriends. So this book is mainly about how these two boys are different in race and language, but doesn't let that get in the way of their new friendship. Sperry's hard work has never been forgotten. He was envied by a lot of people for the mere fact that he wasn't just an author, but an artist. His books show his craft and great love of the sea. Call It Courage has been such a success that it has been translated into over two dozen languages, which and they all have their own unique front cover, including Chinese, Spanish, Dutch, British, Swedish, French, and German. Sperry died on April 28, 1976 in Hanover, New Hampshire at the age of 78. He wrote and illustrated over 25 books and illustrated numerous others for a variety of authors. So as you can see, Sperry may not be here physically, but will always be here in spirit through all the amazing books he has written and illustrated for children. Thank you for listening.